Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. One Piece, starting with a review of Devil Fruit. Chapter 21. So many Marines were sacrificed, most of them were Marine elite generals, and even the bones of these people were mixed together. As the Marine Admiral who led the team, Sakazuki could never let Buggy the Clown escape from here, and he wanted to pay for his death with blood. Heroic Spirit. Marine Headquarters has different opinions. They have to consider the overall situation, and a Kainu Admiral has been defeated once, and there is no guarantee that he will not be defeated next time. If an Admiral loses his combat power, this is unacceptable to all of Marine. Sakazuki, I order you to collect the remains of Marine officers and not to pursue Buggy the Clown privately. Kazaru Admiral has already gone to reinforce. The call bug from Marshal Sengoku, he was not discussing with Sakazuki. The clown buggy is relatively strong personally, but his pirate group is not yet in full swing. Marine has more important things now. Buggy the clown was seriously injured. The opponent's physical strength is about to reach its limit. I believe that as long as we catch up with him, Kazaru and I can kill him. Sakazuki expressed his thoughts. He wanted to avenge his marine, and he couldn't do such a thing as letting the tiger return to his mountain. Don't act alone, wait for Porosalino Admiral where you are, and cut off that live broadcast signal for me. Marshal Sengoku hung up the phone, but Sakazuki's face didn't look good. This man with absolute justice wanted to do something that would not be tolerated by foreign military orders. You guys wait here for Porosalino, I'll chase Buggy the Clown by myself. Although he was knocked into the sea in the battle just now, Akainu is better than Buggy the Clown in terms of physical strength. After all, a man who can fight Aokiji Admiral for 10 days and 10 nights is not afraid of a protracted battle at all. This blonde girl of unknown origin took the initiative to help Marine, but she said a strange thing, saying that she wanted to destroy the island or something. Her language and behavior were still a bit weird. I have been looking for Buggy the Clown for a long time. I want to avenge the people in this town. If I don't kill him today, it will be difficult to relieve the hatred in my heart. In her subsequent narration, Arturia mentioned something that pirates often do. The island where the girl had received a favor was indiscriminately bombed by the clown buggy, causing a large number of civilian casualties and the loss of a large amount of treasure. In order to avenge the townspeople, she has been chasing the clown pirates in a small boat. However, a girl with no navigation knowledge often gets lost in the East Blue Waters. If the sky screen did not prompt that Buggy the Clown appeared in Logue Town, she would have spent her whole life looking for it. Don't be the target of revenge. Relying on the guidance of kind-hearted people, the blonde girl finally caught up with the battle in Logue Town and rescued Smoker at the critical moment to save the future of Marine. This chivalrous girl is naturally kind to Marine. The temperament she exudes is not that of an evil person. In addition, she has a hatred of evil and will not join any pirates. She naturally belongs to the marine camp. Then you come with me. With the help of your swordswoman, Buggy the Clown will not be able to leave alive today. Sakazuki Admiral agreed with the blonde girl's idea. With such a strong helper, he would be more confident in dealing with Buggy the Clown. The marines around him advised him not to disobey Marshal Sengoku's orders, but a Kainu admiral never listened to his advice. He often disobeyed orders from his superiors, and no one here could stop him. A golden light flashed from the sky, and a man with a wretched face wearing sunglasses appeared in marines' field of vision. The man who came was none other than Porosalino Admiral, codenamed Kazaru in marine, a user with Logia sparkling fruit ability. Fortunately, I caught up and wasn't late. This man had his hands in his pockets in the air and looked like he needed a beating. He entered Marine together with Sakazuki. Both of them were veritable monsters. You came just in time. With your speed, you should be able to catch up with Buggy the Clown. Help me delay it. Buggy the Clown is such a scary monster. I probably won't be able to defeat him. Sakazuki, you'd better obey the Marshal's orders. Marine Admiral, who has a lazy and righteous mind, clocks in every day and does the most leisurely job, and has been waiting for retirement when he gets old. How can Marine Admiral work hard for his small salary? Does your behavior still qualify as a Marine Admiral? Porosalino plucked his ears in the air and pretended not to hear. He was simply the reincarnation of a fish monster. When it was time to do it, he did it better than anyone else. He had little prestige or influence in Marine. 
Don't care. Kazaru Admiral and Akainu Admiral are equal in the Marine. Neither of them can order the other. They only obey the orders of Marshal Sengoku. The former was only ordered to reinforce Sakazuki, but he did not say that he wanted to hunt down the clown buggy. With his wretched look and his indifferent attitude, the furious Sakazuki wanted to beat Porosalino, so promoting him to Admiral was a huge mistake. After turning around and thinking calmly, Marshal Sengoku, Kazaru Admiral, and the surviving Marine soldiers all did not want Sakazuki to leave alone. In order not to lose his prestige among the Marines, he decided to place his hope on the blonde girl in front of him. Artoria, just use whatever tricks you have. If you can really kill Buggy the Clown here, all of Marine will owe you a big favor. Even if you fail and destroy the island afterwards, you will not be held accountable. First think Marine Admiral's name assures you. Okay please remember your promise, all of you, step aside, I want to free my sword. When Arturia said she wanted to free the sword, her whole personality underwent an astonishing transformation, like an ancient king ruling the world. The people present dragged the wounded back to the remaining warship. They were on the coast to witness with their own eyes the blonde girl's next peak sword strike. The blonde girl raised the invisible weapon above her head, releasing the restrictions of the Wind King's barrier. The sword kept revealing its true form in the blue storm and dazzling light. This sword was the holy sword of the star, the vow of victory, sword. After the true identity of the sword was completely revealed, a strong storm came from above, causing waves to rise along the entire coast, causing the marine warship to stumble. The girl held the golden sword high above her head, making all the marines present move. I really saw an incredible sword. Porosalino regained his careless expression. Here, he understood light better than anyone else. When the shining sword appeared in his eyes, the power of devil fruit in his body was actually full of this girl. Yearning. Is this sword the supreme sharp sword? It feels even more powerful than this level. Vice Admiral, a ghost spider who often plays with swords, couldn't help but sigh. For a swordsman, having a good sword is even more powerful. Was she ever a king? Sakazuki saw some shadows of a king in this blonde girl, the aura of a king dominating the world. Who was she once? The clown buggy dragged his seriously injured body to the side of his crew. At this moment, this group of evil doing pirates were searching for treasures in the town. The townspeople living in Logue Town were in such a hurry when they left that they couldn't take most of their things with them. Instead, they gave the clown pirates a free advantage. Gia Gia Gia, kids, prepare the boat and let's go out to sea. Marine will catch up soon. Master Buggy, we were preparing the ship just now. Others are moving things to the ship. There are too many things to move. It was Mochi who first thought of replenishing the supplies on the ship. He also said that other pirates were searching around the town and would pack up and take away whatever was useful. This trip was not easy. Logue Town is the only way to enter the Upside Down Mountain. The maritime economy and trade are relatively developed, and it is considered a particularly wealthy town. Smoker, the White Hunter, used to guard this place. The pirates wanted to take advantage of this place, and they were all caught after they were renovated, to jail. With this opportunity today, the pirates were like a mouse falling into a rice vat, robbing the town of supplies without restraint, slowing down the progress of the voyage. It can be said that Marine was not very rigorous in his work, allowing the townspeople to leave Logue Town, but did not sink the clown pirate's ship, giving these guys a chance to escape. I watched with my own eyes as Alberta walked out of a women's clothing store, carrying large and small bags in her hands, and wearing a brand new set of clothes. Others, like this female pirate, were shopping at Logue Town for zero dollars. Mochi, please call everyone back. If they don't get on the boat within ten minutes, they will stay in Logue Town forever. Buggy, the clown, said these words and turned into an afterimage at the same speed, rushing towards his pirate ship. Hurry up and call someone, don't you see that the captain is unhappy? Alberta originally wanted to visit a jewelry store, but the current situation could only give up. Carrying her carefully selected clothes, the woman chose to follow the captain's footsteps. The captain has changed a lot, right? The lion next to the trainer has been hiding behind Mochi and shivering since the captain came back. I really don't know what it is afraid of. It is such a timid beast. While the clown pirates were preparing the pirate ship, Marine had already been attracted by the blonde girl. 
Artoria, who had a solemn expression on her beautiful face, slowly closed her emerald-like eyes, brewing her own moves in her heart. So much light. Did even my dead colleagues turn into light? Even the sea has risen with light. Some light spots floated up from the depths of the sea, some light spots floated out from the marine branch cemetery, some light spots floated out from the bones of marine who had just died in battle, and some light spots floated over from the direction of Loha town. Spots of light from all directions converged on the golden sword. With the sword held high above his head with both hands, under the blessing of countless light points, the sword body has changed into a pillar of light that reaches the sky. The strong light has broken through the sky and has grown to hundreds of meters. Such a powerful move is still getting stronger. The light transformed from the sword is still growing longer and thicker. What a scary monster. Porosalino looked at the lightsaber thousands of meters in the sky. Fortunately, he brought a pair of sunglasses before setting off. Other marines were not so lucky. Because of the relatively short distance, the flashing light of the lightsaber stung people's eyes, as if they were also being shown into the light. It seems that the island of Logue Town will no longer exist in the future. Sakazuki kept his eyes open the whole time, enjoying the dazzling light. This righteous man perceived part of the truth in the light, and felt a noble belief that he had never experienced before. That shining sword is the tragic and lofty dream that all the warriors who died on the battlefield in the past, future and present have in their hearts when they are dying. She is proud of this will and carries out this reputation to the end, end. If this girl becomes marine marshal, I will always be an admiral. Sakazuki felt shocked in the sword, and suddenly had such a ridiculous idea in his heart. He was impressed by the girl's sword, he was overwhelmed by the girl's appearance, and even more impressed by the girl's will. With Arturia as the center, strong wind swept through the surroundings, letting the golden light illuminate the entire sea area, exuding a terrifying aura that destroyed the world. The blonde girl opened her green eyes, and the victorious king felt in her heart. Full of confidence to win. Its name. Noble Phantasm True Name Liberation, the Sword of Vowed Victory. X. Caliber. The lightsaber, which was thousands of meters long, struck down, and everything blocking it disappeared in the dazzling light. The marine branches that were originally spread across the sky were cut into two pieces in an instant. Then came the entire Logue town. Under the unparalleled light, the earth trembled and the houses were shattered. Wherever the light went, everything in the town was turned into powder. This was an unparalleled absolute power. Some Logue town residents who had not gone far, more than 10 nautical miles away, saw a sky-reaching light beam striking the location of Logue Town. The power of destroying everything made these survivors kneel on the ground and beg. His moves are just like divine punishment, completely beyond the understanding of these ordinary people. When the dazzling light completely dissipated, Logue Town, a once prosperous sea town, was wiped off the map with one move, leaving not even a piece of land to settle on. What followed was a flood of sea water, completely submerging it traces of past human life. This was a power that Marine had never controlled before. The girl's move was comparable to the ancient weapon, which seriously impacted Marine's worldview. He never expected that there would be such a powerful being in this world. Arturia put the sword back into its scabbard, and she was floating on the sea. What she had just done had no effect on her. There was not much change in her expression. If it had any effect, it was that she was a little hungry. Now she had something to eat. Psychology. Even the island is gone. Buggy the clown should be dead. If he doesn't die like this, we marine won't be able to do anything to him in the future. What a terrifying attack power, but luckily it didn't fall on marine's head. When the surviving marines were discussing on the warship, Sakazuki asked the girl, do you have somewhere to go? I can ask the marine warship to take you there. The blonde girl flew across the sea to the warship in three steps and two steps, and said to the marines, I have been traveling alone since I pulled out this sword. So are you interested in joining marine? The live broadcast signal of the newspaper King Morgan's has not been interrupted. The girl's devastating blow was recorded in the camera bug and spread throughout the world. In addition, Arturia boarded the marine warship. This newsman, who was not too big a fan of the excitement, decided to write the press release himself and urged his subordinates to quickly print newspapers so that this world-shocking news could be conveyed to the entire known world. Corner. Logue Town Big Event. 
The Admiral is defeated and Buggy the Clown hides a secret. The disappeared Loeb Town, is it a great good or a great evil? Humanoid ancient weapon, Artoria Pendragon. The world's number. One female swordsman, the world's number. One swordsman's strongest opponent. The strongest marine in history, the end of the New World Pirates. The most powerful pirate clown in history, Buggy, is alive and dead. The largest circulation newspaper in the pirate world, under the personal supervision of Morgans, World Economic News published several newspapers in succession, allowing this big news to spread throughout the world. One day passed after the war. Smoker was still on the warship. He spent 100 belly to buy a newspaper. Each headline on it was more shocking than the last. The Birdman was the biggest headline maker in the pirate world. Behind the scenes, he also bought a newspaper. Fan the flames and put Marine on the fire. The newspaper also comes with several super close-up pictures. The first picture is of Buggy the Clown laughing after defeating a Kainu Admiral. The second picture is of Arturia using the island-destroying ultimate move to use a thousand-meter lightsaber. The third picture is this is what Loeb Town looks like after it disappears into the sea. I have to say that their reporters are professional, and every photo is better than Marines. It stands to reason that Five Elders is not short of zone bird fruit. The quality of printable newspapers cannot be compared to Morgan's, and the authenticity of the news is even worse than but. The world government has been dealing with the World Economic News Agency both overtly and covertly. The investigation of Morgan's, the president, has never stopped. It has done things like beheading and using him as a dog. As a result, the king of the underground dark world has always been. Zone Devil Fruit appears in its animal form. After so many years of targeting, he is still alive and well, firmly holding the right to speak as the best-selling news newspaper, and a major provider of intelligence. In the end, there is nothing he can do to Morgan's. The newspaper was belittling Marine, exaggerating the clown buggy's influence, and constantly touting Artoria's strength. It turned out that the two unknown little people, under the deliberate promotion of Morgan's, became his name became a household name, reaching the point where no one knew it. It's true that people cannot be judged by their appearance. Smoker looked at Artoria, who was eating hazelnuts. This, noble girl, with stunning beauty had empty dishes piled in front of her, all of which she ate by herself. One more bowl thanks. Arturia handed the empty bowl to the cook on the warship. She alone had the same amount of food as a dozen adult men. Now all the marine cooks were surrounding her. Her small body of less than two meters would never be able to fill up any one of them. Stomach. Tashigi, who is also a woman, sat next to the blonde girl and kept bringing tea and water to Arturia. This courtesy was never used on her superior, smoker. As a hobby of collecting famous swords, Tashigi was very interested in Artoria's sword. Her eyes never left her star sword. After pondering for a long time, she finally asked what was in her heart. Lady Arturia, I would like to ask you, I have never seen this sword in your hand. Is it the supreme sharp sword? Stop calling me sir, just call me Artoria. My sword does not belong to the twelve skills of the supreme sharp sword. It is called the sword of victory. I got it from a big lake. The blonde girl answered the other party's question and felt a grain of rice in the corner of her mouth. She licked the corner of her mouth and ate it into her mouth. It had been several days since she was summoned to this world. This was the first time she had eaten such a full meal, and it was Marine's food. Pretty good. Your craftsmanship is so good. Please give me another bowl. Okay, Artoria Sama, you need to wait for a while. You have already finished the pot you just had. I will make another pot for you right now. The ship's chef didn't have any ill intentions towards this edible girl. Although her appetite was a little big, she was very strong. If the other party hadn't rescued Marine, I don't know how many people would have died in Marine. A murderous pirate will not pity a cook who has no fighting ability. Only the latter can surrender, and the former will never end well if he surrenders. In the battle at Loeb Town, there were only two marine battleships left in the end. One was led by a Kainu admiral, who took away the bones of the marine who died in the battle and returned to naval headquarters with Artoria. Another ship, led by Kazaru admiral, conducted a large-scale search and inspection of this sea area. The purpose was to find traces of the clown pirates. Even a plank from the other pirate's ship would be enough. Under that terrifying island-destroying move, 
all traces were wiped out with a sword strike, and the clown pirates disappeared on the spot. Did Buggy really die under that sword move? A group of military doctors surrounded Sakazuki. While bandaging the wound, Marshal Sengoku called. The first was concerned about his physical condition, and the second was concerned about Artoria's affairs. She has agreed to join Marine. Marshal Sengoku, you should consider how to treat her. Throwing the question to the Marine Marshal gave the resourceful general a headache. This period was not yet the Marine recruitment period. To quickly promote a person with no Marine experience to a Marine Admiral was something that was not done in Marine history, has not appeared yet. Marine is a violent organization under the world government. The main source of budget comes from this. Adding an Admiral to the organization will take up a lot of budget. This kind of thing needs to be negotiated with the five elders. Marshal Marine is not a man of words in Marine. He and I have thought about this situation and decided to temporarily set up an admiral candidate and set up an additional marine admiral. I need to talk to Marshal Kong about it. However, money is a small matter. Marine can actually absorb such a strong person. It is a huge spiritual inspiration for Marine as a whole in the world. In the subsequent battles with the pirate group, there is no need to be like before. Look forward and backward. Marine has no shortage of middle and lower level soldiers. The only thing it lacks is high-end combat power. There are too many places to defend with high-end combat power. Instead, it is hampered everywhere and cannot gather all its strength to twist into a rope to completely wipe out the bandits at sea. The second half of the Grand Line, New World, has always been a paradise for pirates. Marine's power there can only be barely maintained. With the addition of Artoria, this situation may be broken. After having a good meal and wine, Artoria was assigned to an independent room. There are very few such independent rooms on warships. Only those with a rank of Vice Admiral or above have the right to use them. There are two female Marines standing guard outside the room, ready for instructions. Marine treated her very well. The blonde girl took out what looked like a Bluetooth headset from her pocket. She put it directly on her left ear, pressed the switch on it, and received a man's voice. Artoria, you're doing a good job. Just focus on lurking in the marine and report to me as soon as you have new information. Okay young master, but who would have thought that behind this big incident in Logue Town, there was a pair of dark hands hiding in the dark that was driving it all. East Blue Fukushima, the culprit behind the Logue Town incident. Mr. Li Wei focuses on leisurely enjoying his fishing time. When there is no fun in the world, he can only pass the time with hobbies in the last world. I had a secret phone call with Artoria a few days ago. This blonde girl has been accepted by Marine senior management and will be admitted to the position of Admiral Candidate in a few days. At this time, Marshal Sengoku was still in charge. I originally thought that Marine would only give him the rank of Vice Admiral, but he didn't expect that it would go one step further. Arturia was just one step away from becoming Marine Admiral. A few years later, the old guy Sengoku retired, and Arturia had the opportunity to compete for the position of Marine Marshal. If one of her own became Marine Marshal, the scene would be unbelievable. The Bluetooth headset Arturia used for reporting was much easier to use than the Devil Fruit. Li Wei used the master machine, and then all his subordinates used slave machines. The slave machines cannot communicate with each other unilaterally. After the parent machine opens permissions, they can contact each other. This kind of prop was bought in the system store, called Unlimited Communication Equipment. I spent 10 million on duty and bought a set containing a mother machine and five slave machines. With this prop, spies from other forces can join other forces at any time and anywhere. Get in touch with Li Wei. While waiting for the fish in the sea to take the bait, Li Wei clicked on the hero interface of the system, and a 3D blonde villain appeared in his eyes. He was dressed exactly like Arturia. He was scaled down 10 times to look even cuter. Hero basic introduction and skill information can all be observed on this interface. Arturia Pendragon. From. Fate Series. Age. Forever 15. Weapon. Anti-City Noble Phantasm, Sword of Vow to Victory. Talents, Magic Power, Riding, Path of Glory, Magic Power Release, Leadership Temperament. Abilities, Primary Conqueror's Hockey, Wind King's Barrier, Wind King's Hammer, Liberation Pledge Victory Sword. 
Mainly in terms of talents, the system has been extensively modified to make Artoria more adaptable to the world of pirates and let this ugly world experience the shock of foreign heroes. Talent against magic. It was originally ineffective against any magic, but was changed to its own ability to resist devil fruit. In close combat, it invalidates the ability of demon fruit power. Talented riding. Able to skillfully control various vehicles, including marine warships. Path of Talented Glory. Gaining powerful combat intuition is the ability to instantly determine the most suitable action for oneself during combat. It has entered the field of predicting the future. It can predict ballistic trajectories through wind and intuition, avoid attacks by firearms, and reduce visual and hearing impairment by half. Innate Magic Power Release. Refers to strengthening one's weapons and body through magic power. The silver armor worn in battle is also woven with magic power. Talented leadership temperament. This talent is endowed with a more powerful ability by the system. The morale of the army led by it becomes higher and never defeated. The amazing morale guarantees that the army will fight to the last man. The physical fitness of our army members will be increased in all aspects. The weaker the ability in the team, the stronger the amplification effect. The first hero he got for free was perfect in all aspects. Lee Wei just exchanged her for a Junior Conqueror's Hockey Comprehension card, so he didn't need to worry too much about other aspects. She was born to get along with Marine and mix with the Revolutionary Army. On the contrary, it is out of place. Arturia's last gift of leadership is more effective than the Revolutionary Army's encouragement fruit. Let her lead a large army in a frontal battle, and a small soldier turns into a super soldier. It is simply a nightmare for pirates. In addition, our king, when he was 15 years old, pulled out the sword in the stone, he stopped aging and kept the appearance of a girl forever. It can be said that he has the ability to live forever. If Arturia sits on Marshal Marine's position, I don't know how many levels of Marine Admiral she has to endure. Retirement is impossible, and it is impossible to retire in this life. Sengoku, Garp, and Suru will retreat to the second line of Marine as they get older, losing real power in a powerful organization like Marine. Even if Sakazuki cannot compete for the position of Marshal in the next few years, Artoria has definitely become a Marine Admiral. She can kill a Kainu in time, and the position of Marshal will be hers sooner or later. I really want to thank the news King Morgans. His newspapers and live broadcasts really helped me a lot. In the big event of Logue Town, Liwei could use the marquee to broadcast live. He felt that doing so would lose a lot of power, so he simply gave up this option. In terms of Tianmu's positioning, it pays more attention to writing the future, and does not care too much about what is going to happen now, so that other forces believe that Tianmu is neutral. Fortunately, Morgans filled this live broadcast gap. Although the live broadcast effect was not as strong as the one brought by the Marquis, he did his best to spread the battle process to the world, and his newspapers later added fuel to the fire. The headlines on the news are more shocking than the last. Talents like this should go to work in the UC News Department. Morgans is indeed the biggest headliner in the pirate world. Later in the comics, Luffy's bounty was so high, largely because of this Birdman. When he was on Cake Island, he was no match for Big Mom, but when he escaped, he was promoted to be the fifth emperor of the sea. In order to make everyone believe in the future described by Tianmu, he could not let go of his children to trap the wolf, so Li Wei personally entered the body of Buggy the Clown, and with the blessing of the system's ability, he fought back and forth with a Kainu admiral, but it took him all at once. Li Wei's entire family fortune was worth 600 million yuan. During this period, he also exchanged a Junior Conqueror's Hockey Comprehension card for Smoker. The punch on him made him comprehend Conqueror's Hockey. Otherwise, he would never be able to comprehend Conqueror's Hockey on his own in this life. Smoker is one of Li Wei's candidates for the future Marine Admiral. The deserter Wang Kebi has always looked down on him. It is better to let the White Hunter who has a better look take the position. He has to strike hard at those who have connections. What a cat and a dog. They can all be marine heroes, which seriously reduces the quality of marine heroes. Thanks to the help of Morgans, Li Wei gained more cheek points. The cheek points he originally spent on Buggy the Clown, this time he earned back both the capital and profits. 
The cheated points returned to the level of 1 billion, and Li Wei could enter the system store again and do a lot of shopping. There is no special need for props at the moment. Li Wei's own strength has reached the level of a swordsman. He can walk sideways in a small place like East Blue, and he doesn't need to waste his cheat points. Now being cheated can be spent in two directions. The first is to enhance the original characters in the pirate world, and the second is to recruit more heroic units. Since Marine has been strengthened, the pirates must also be strengthened. From the perspective of the people behind the scenes, Marine and the pirates are just two stronger crickets. If there is too great a disparity in strength between the two sides during the cricket fight, the original fun of crickets will be lost. To watch, two crickets fight to the death, fighting to the death. Only one hero, Artoria Pendragon, is not enough. Li Wei needs more heroes to join. I don't know what his luck will be like today. After a day of fishing in the sea, I didn't harvest any fish. According to the law of conservation of character, if I don't have good luck here, my luck will get better elsewhere. Anyway, no one can stop today's decision to draw the hero pool. Switch the system interface to the hero pool option. Last time, he got a King Arthur for free. He might get a better character this time. In short, Li Wei is very confident in himself. The 100 million on duty stud entered, the hero pool flashed with the teleportation sign of the six pointed star, and a young man with a round head appeared in Li Wei's eyes. Am I right? How could it be him? Alan Yeager. From Attack on Titan. Age 19 years old. Weapons None. Talents Hardening, Body Regeneration. Ability Zone Fruit Giant Form, Mastering the Power of the Nine Giants. Just like what Li Wei thought, it was the boy who shouted, Tap, tap away. He is now a young man. Attack on Titan shocked him greatly when he was in school. Although the anime was later banned, the popularity is still high. No less, but unfortunately the author got sick and ended the comic, causing all the characters to have broken personalities, and the protagonist, Alan, became a clown. Now that Eren Jaeger has been summoned, he is currently in a youthful state, which means that the world-destroying operation was stopped by the Holy Mother team, and then he was willing to be transported by Mikasa. He already has a very mature mentality. Am I not dead? This is. Eren Jaeger looked around in confusion, and there was another unfamiliar sea nearby. In his life, the sea was a scenery that the opponent could not avoid. He said that there were enemies on the other side of the sea. His unswerving spirit of resistance, Memories Li Wei was still a little moved when he got up. Later, as the owner of the hero, Li Wei gave Eren Jaeger a general introduction to the world of pirates, and treated him to a feast of grilled fish. The fish was bought from a neighbor. The giant power in me has become the devil fruit ability, which means my lifespan will not be shortened. It would be great if Airman could come to this world. Alan thought about his closest friend, the virgin with superpowers. First, she could lift the life limit on Elman. Secondly, Alman would sail in a world full of seas by boat. Unfortunately, he would never he won't come, and his lover Mikasa won't come either. If you choose death in the end, your life will end in that world but you will live a more exciting life in this world. The hero unit is absolutely loyal to Li Wei, but they each have their own personalities. They are all living people. After completing the designated tasks, they will enjoy life in this pirate world and are thoughtful puppets. Alan possesses nine kinds of giant powers. When using devil fruit, he can change the giant form at will. Each giant has a special ability. The somewhat useless giant form is enhanced by the appearance of the system god Tyr. The ancestral titan, the first method feeds its own blood to humans, and after roaring, it can turn into an incorruptible titan, with a probability of strange species of giants appearing. The second method feeds spinal fluid to humans, which can be passed through the opponent's own body characteristics, change into one of the other eight types of giants. The giants born from these two situations completely obey Alan's instructions. A super giant that becomes a super giant with a height of more than 100 meters. It can release high temperature steam without consuming its own flesh and blood. In Attack on Titan, you can steal memories by eating the enemy, and you can see what happened to the enemy in the future. Female giants are a more flexible type of giant. They have the fastest movement speed and gain some of the abilities of other giants. The Armored Titan, a giant covered in hardened armor, 
can transfer his thoughts to various parts of his body to prevent him from being killed instantly in human form. Jaw Titan, a giant with specialized teeth and claws who can fly. A beast giant, a beast giant that changes into different types depending on the person, such as apes, elephants, flying eagles, etc. Warhammer Titan, this state can create hardened weapons out of thin air, and the hardened ability is enhanced. The Card Titan, the titan with the strongest endurance, can always maintain the form of a titan and can transform hundreds of times in a row. With the current ability of this young Oren, if he returns to the world of attack, he will definitely not be defeated by the Madonna team with explosives. Oren may be able to live happily with Mikasa. In terms of single combat power, Oren is definitely not Artoria's opponent, but the former is more like a war weapon, turning our weaklings into unsullied giants. With the level of guns and cannons in the pirate world, it is not possible kill with one hit. The weakness of the back of the neck of the giants has been eliminated, and they have the ability to regenerate their bodies. After recovery, they can continue to fight. Moreover, the giants will only attack humanoid targets. Only by completely cutting off their heads can they finally stop them. The world government and marine are studying jauntization, and Charlotte Linlin wants to reunite with the country of giants. Giants are quite popular in the pirate world, and Alan's employment prospects are very bright. A young man with a will to resist was naturally not a member of the marine side. After getting to know Alan, he still chose to join the pirate side. After all, he couldn't act like a dog to others in his previous life, and he even trampled the opponent's country to death with a super giant. It was even less possible for him to act like a dog to the celestial dragons in this life. Then it is necessary to arrange a tragic life experience for Oren Jaeger, and to have in sworn hatred with the world government. This is the most necessary. Only after he appears can others be more convinced. It's the plot plugger's turn again, but this thing is really easy to use. I spent 10 million to buy a plot plugger in the system. Its function is particularly powerful. It can distort some people's memories and insert the false memories they want. Anything that is too unreasonable will not work. The first one was used on Artoria. Li Wei thoughtfully used this prop to give her the origin of a subjugated princess. It is woven that there used to be a small kingdom called Great Britain on the East Blue, and then it was destroyed by pirates and completely disappeared from history. Artoria was the last member of the royal family. All her subjects died and she lost the reason to restore the kingdom. She was always alone. Wandering in the East Blue, I met a large number of ordinary people on many small islands and helped them fight against pirates. For such a strong person who appears suddenly, Marine will definitely back up the world government. If what she says does not match what is found, it will be difficult not to make people think that she is an enemy spy. She must do all the tricks to prevent people from making a show. See the flaw. When Arturia came to this world, she had no desire to restore her country, let alone govern a country. Carrying the expectations of all her subjects was too heavy for this girl. As for the plot for Oren Jaeger, it is very simple. The world government has done too many dirty things, especially the plot of the notorious white town Frevens. All tragedies are caused by greed. Alan became another survivor of the white town after Trafalgar Law. The Straw Hat crew climbed over Upside Down Mountain and met the lighthouse keeper Crocus at twin points just like the original plot. From meeting him after being sucked into the whale laboon's mouth, he now actively waits for the Straw Hat crew. He doesn't want to block a group of young pirates from entering the Grand Line because of Laboon. Uncle, it turns out you are the former Pirate King's ship doctor. You are really awesome. Luffy was very happy. He didn't expect to meet the ship's doctor from Roger's pirate group, and was rescued by him to prevent the ship from being destroyed. This was the third former One Piece crew member he met. In Crocus's subsequent description, the Straw Hat pirates knew why the whale Laboon kept hitting the red line with his head. This matter started 50 years ago, and the source of everything came from the Lombard pirates. Abandoning the young whale, Laboon waited in place, agreeing to meet again after circling the world, but the Lombard pirates disappeared in the Grand Line. Later, one of the purposes of Crocus going to sea was to find them, but there was still no result. After Luffy heard this story, he took the initiative to have a fight with the whale Laboon, and agreed that after he conquered the Grand Line, he would sail around the sea and come back to challenge it. 
He also painted the Straw Hat Pirate's logo on the whale's scarred head to prevent Laboon from continuing to harm himself. During this period, he also met people from Baroque Studio, Mr. Nine and Miss Wednesday. These two people came to deal with the whale Laboon, because this huge whale blocked the front, seriously hindering the pirate group from entering the Grand Line, and making the bounty hunter group in Whiskey Peak Hunt less bounty. Things changed during this episode. Crocus planned to entertain the Straw Hat boys, but he did not let the group leave so quickly. The two prisoners were tied to the boat. It turns out that Uncle also knows Buggy the Clown, but he was so weak that I beat him away. Luffy answered casually while chewing meat in his mouth. He didn't read newspapers very much and knew nothing about what happened in Logue Town. I didn't expect Buggy the Clown to change so much. I didn't notice it at all when I was on the boat. While Crocus lamented that he had missed something, he also took out today's latest newspaper and handed it to Nami, who likes to read newspapers. Now the only one with a brain in the Straw Hat Pirates is this navigator. The headlines in the newspaper and the accompanying pictures made the little thieving cat sweat. The battle in Logue Town completely exceeded imagination. Buggy the Clown, no, Lord Buggy is so strong. It's incredible that he can defeat Marine Admiral. She was more than happy in her heart. Fortunately, there was a mysterious Master of Wind who escorted the Straw Hat Pirates out of Marine's encirclement. If they had stayed there, they would probably be completely wiped off the map like Logue Town. The bounty of the Straw Hat Pirates has not changed. This may be the biggest blessing, or does Marine have no time to care about them? Sanji took the newspaper from Nami's hand. When he saw Artoria's beauty, he was instantly captivated by this stunning girl. He had never seen such a beautiful woman. Although her figure was not as strong as the current Nami's, she exuded his temperament as incomparable to that of a little thief cat. What a beauty. I really want to cook her a meal and let her experience my craftsmanship. The world's number one female swordsman is truly a formidable opponent. Zoro drunkenly snatched the newspaper from Sanji's hand. He never cared about women, but he had a soft spot for the swordsman. Looking at the description in the newspaper, he could kill Logue Town with one sword. He knew that he was unable to defeat him at this moment. The target he wants to defeat in his heart is a female swordsman. Zoro needs these strong men to inspire him and become stronger to surpass these monsters. He, a three-sword swordsman, is also a monster. If Giyu Yina was still alive, she would be able to grow into a female swordsman now. I never thought that one day I would be worried about knowing the future. A wry smile appeared on Nami's lips. If she had known how much money she could earn in the future, Nami would be very happy. But when she got on a pirate ship and became a navigator on the ship, everything changed. As one of the two and a half brains of the Straw Hat Pirates, she was more worried about the news revealed on the sky screen. In the original future, there are people who would not have met, because the curtain has been revealed all over the world, more attention will be paid to Luffy and his gang, and they may encounter powerful enemies that they have never faced before. Crocus agrees very much with this. If he hadn't been attracted by the sky, as Laboon's doctor, he would have stayed in the whale's belly and wouldn't be here to greet Luffy the Straw Hat and his gang, let alone today's dinner. The impact of changes in the future is really great. In the original future, it is estimated that Logue Town will not disappear in the sea, and Buggy will get what he wants. The more he thought about this, the more Crocus frowned. Changes in the established future will affect the fate of many people, and will it affect his and Laboon's fate? As for what Buggy wanted to get from Bullet, Crocus, the ship's doctor who boarded the ship later, didn't know. Even if he was captured and tortured by the world government, there would be no result. On the contrary, Bullet and Impel Down will attract great attention from the world government and Marine. This militant guy has been in prison, constantly exercising and training hockey. He is incompatible with other prisoners on the same level and will inevitably suffer the bitterness of skin and flesh. I don't care about the future. I, Luffy, will be the Pirate King. Luffy opened his mouth and shouted loudly. His optimistic and adventurous spirit made him never have troubles, and when he had troubles, he would solve them with his fists. When he shouted his signature catchphrase, there was a sound above going merry. Are you really Straw Hat Luffy? Luffy heard the female captive on the ship calling him, he smiled and waved in response, I am Straw Hat Luffy, am I so famous now? Miss is the undercover agent of Wednesday Baroque Studio.
She is Vivi, the princess of Alabasta. However, this look is her dark history. This killer outfit completely conceals her beauty. Even Sanji, an old pervert, is not interested in this look of a woman. Interest. Originally, Nami didn't believe it. A princess from a big country was so destitute that she worked in a studio. Who would believe it? Coming to Luffy, Princess Vivi told her that Alabasta was currently undergoing a large-scale rebellion, and the mastermind behind everything was Crocodile, one of the seven warlords of the sea. He was a pirate who was stealing the country. On Whiskey Peak on the route ahead, there is a group of bounty hunters preparing to hunt pirates in the town. They will dress up to welcome the pirates and hold a welcome banquet for each other. During this period, they drugged the pirates to stun them, and then gave them to Marine in exchange for the corresponding bounty. This group of people worked here for many years. Princess Vivi believed in Straw Hat Luffy for the first time when she met him. It was not because she was naive and romantic, but because the sky screen revealed the future, saying that Luffy could defeat Crocodile. After resting for a day at Twin Capes, Navigator Nami learned from Crocus that all the islands on the Grand Line are magnetic, so the compass used in East Blue cannot be used here. This suddenly touched the little thief cat's heart. Knowledge blind spots. Fortunately, Mr. Nine and Princess Vivi have the record pointer to the next island in their hands, which is Whiskey Peak, an island occupied by a group of bounty hunters. Princess Vivi revealed her life experience, but Nami, who was too naive, didn't believe it, and even wanted to take them to the other party's base camp. This was simply throwing herself into a trap. However, the Straw Hat crew currently does not have a permanent pointer in their hands. If they accidentally sail into the calm belt, there are so many sea kings there that this group of people cannot deal with it. This time, Straw Hat Luffy and his team, with Princess Vivi as the leader of the Baroque studio, were not deceived on the small island of Whiskey Peak. Luffy, as the captain, did not have a misunderstanding or fight with Zoro. Mr. Eight, a Baroque member stationed at Whiskey Peak, this curly-haired man was a subordinate of Princess Vivi. With these two insiders working together, they easily defeated hundreds of bounty hunters. After defeating the opponent and having a feast here, he met the members of Baroque Studio who came for reinforcements in the evening. They were a man and a woman who came to get rid of Princess Vivi. As long as the members found out the true identity of Baroque Studio's fertilization, they will get rid of these people. It is really ironic that the boss of a studio that supports bounty hunters is one of the seven warlords of the sea. Princess Vivi, we are also following orders. Your return to Alabasta will cause trouble for the studio. Mr. Five, the Paramisha bomb fruit user, can also be called the booger fruit user because he has endless boogers. The two sides started fighting after a disagreement. Mr. Five was picking boogers in his nose, and the boogers he shot out were bombs with amazing power. Zoro tried it with a knife. Although he cut the booger bomb into two sections, the effect of the bomb was still there. A pirate hunter actually boarded a pirate's ship, let me crush you to death here. In the wind and waves of the explosion, a blonde woman floated into the air. This is Ms. Valentine Paramisha, a user with the kilogram fruit ability. She can adjust the weight of her body at will, and can strengthen it to more than 10,000 kilograms at most. Just when the two were posing to show off, Zoro and Luffy each picked one and knocked the other to the ground within two moves, easily eliminating their opponent. The Baroque studio duo relied too much on Devil Fruit's abilities, but they went astray in developing Devil Fruit's abilities. In terms of physical skills, they were no match for Luffy's group. It was normal for them to get beaten up. With Mr. Five and Ms. Valentine, the two members of Ballot Studio stirring up trouble, the Straw Hat crew believed what Princess Vivi said. At Princess Vivi's request, Luffy agreed to help. The man from the Seven Warlords of the Sea was actually destroying a country. He couldn't stand this kind of thing. The way Princess Vivi knelt down and cried in front of him. He couldn't stand a woman crying in front of him the most, which made Luffy even more determined to defeat Crocodile. Seven warlords of the sea or something, would the clown buggy be powerful? Nami knew she couldn't afford to offend Marine's seven warlords of the sea, but Luffy and Zoro were still eager to try. They had no idea how terrifying the pirates recruited by Marine were on the sea before. While everyone was talking, the unlucky duo responsible for intelligence work at Baroque Studio were observing the entire process on the second floor. 
By the time they found out, the other party had already flown away and could no longer catch up. Seeing this result, Nami was afraid of being killed and silenced. She almost collapsed and grabbed Princess Vivi by the neck. She would rather not know the news. It was dark just now, so Nami thought that the pair of sea otters and vultures might not have seen her face clearly, and she wanted to go back to Kokoja village to hide from the limelight. She had just taken a few steps when she saw Mr. Thirteen, a sea otter, drawing a sketch. Before Nami could step forward, he showed her his calligraphy treasure. It looks like a painting. Nami couldn't help but admire the other party's painting skills, which were much more professional than Marine's intelligence department. The sea otter sat on the vulture again, carrying the portraits of all members of the straw hat crew, and flew into the sky leaving everyone helpless. Come back. I don't want to be hunted down. Nami was left alone to cry without tears. Then she hid in the corner, put her head into her knees, and fell into autistic state. Princess Vivi wanted to use her 500,000 Bailey's private money to comfort her. This Miss Navigator. You are the only princess of Alabasta. There should be a lot of treasures in the treasury. Let's help you save the country. It's not too much to give us some benefits. Looking at Miss Nami, who looked sad just now, but now her eyes were replaced by money, Princess Vivi timidly asked, how much are you prepared to ask for? No more, no more, just one billion baileys. Princess Vivi, return the guilt I felt just now, Nami really dares to ask for it. Before Crocodile became the seven warlords of the sea, he had already obtained a wanted order worth 80 million in bounty, which is worth four arlongs. After being recruited by Marine, the wanted order will be revoked. His current strength should exceed this bounty. Hearing the bad news, Usopp was trembling with fear. This kind of powerful monster was not something they could deal with, so they started to argue about breaking up and running away. He faced Nami Chan's invincible iron fist and knocked the sniper on the ship to the ground with one punch. The little thieving cat wanted to fight for the benefit of one billion belly. She had never seen so much money. While everyone was discussing the next countermeasures, Mr. Eight, also known as Icarum, walked out in women's clothing. He dressed up as Princess Vivi and held several dolls in his hands. He wanted to use his life to attract attention to the Straw Hat crew so that they could escape the joint encirclement and suppression of the Baroque studio. Princess Vivi would never agree to such a dangerous thing that could lead to death, no Icarum, I can't let you die. Your Highness, this is the record pointer for the next stop. You must lead the Straw Hat crew to save our kingdom. At this time, Icarum already had a death wish in his heart. After seeing that his helpers could easily defeat Mr. Five and Ms. Valentine, and handed Princess Vivi into the hands of these friendly pirates, maybe Luffy could defeat Crocodile as Tianmu said. I can help you. A young man with dark hair and a round head walked out of the shadows, abruptly interrupting the sensual conversation between the monarch and his ministers. How did you escape? This young man was a young man who floated to Whiskey Island in a small boat before the Straw Hat crew came. Seeing that this young man was not offered a bounty by Marine, Icarum thought he was a stupid young man who had just entered the Grand Line, so he got him drunk and locked him up. Got up. You can't hold me in that little place. I just sobered up. With your boat, can you break through this blockade? The mysterious man who suddenly appeared pointed to the coast, and a ship under the banner of Baroque Studio was seen rushing forward with searchlights in the night. At least a dozen lights appeared on the sea. Beren Jaeger, you really have a way. Icarum revealed the name of the person. As a minister of a country, he still has some insight. Even if he were to die in such a strong siege on the sea, he would never be able to break through this blockade. Zoro looked at the ship with the lights getting closer and closer. With his current strength, he could only engage in a boarding battle. He couldn't split a ship with one sword. With his current strength, he couldn't do it. Sanji, the ship's cook, like Zoro, is better at close combat. He usually challenges the opposing cadres in a one-on-one -on -one fight and does not have the means to attack from a distance. As the only sniper on the Straw Hat ship, Usopp has limited long-range attack damage. Nami's weather stick has not yet been developed. Captain Luffy can pose a threat to the enemy's hull, but as long as he accidentally falls into the sea, other crew members will need to fish out the demon. Fruit power. I'm not helping you for free. After this is done, I'm going to take your pirate ship to a certain place. 
The other party didn't make any unreasonable demands. Nami directly bypassed Captain Luffy and agreed directly. As long as he didn't pay for it and didn't spend Bailey, it was acceptable to give the other party a smooth sailing. Luffy looked Alan up and down with his small eyes. From the other person's cold eyes, he could feel this strange young man's disregard for life, which gave him the impression that this young man was not a good person. We can handle it ourselves, don't you think Zoro Sanji? I listen to the captain and we will do whatever he wants us to do. I'm just a ship's cook, I have no other opinion. Shut up, you three. Seeing the three men in the team making stinky faces, Nami Chan waved her pink fists, punching one after another, leaving a big bump on the foreheads of the three stinky men. She wanted to hit armament hockey with her fist that was not covered. Wake up these three mindless idiots. After a few more punches, Nami came out of her furious state and smiled at Alan, the three of them have no objections. Please ask Mr. Alan to take action. Baroque Studio brought many elite members this time. Originally, there was no need to dispatch so many people to capture the traitors in the organization, but the future revealed in the sky still made Crocodile pay attention to the group of Draft Hat boys. After the reasoning of seven warlords of the sea, it is really possible for the Straw Hat crew to meet Princess Vivi, so they will do everything possible and bury the other pirate group and the princess together in Whiskey Peak. Wanting to be the pirate king is not overseas countries. Saw ships in the harbor. That pirate flag is confirmed to be that of the Straw Hat pirates. The gunner loads the cannonballs and sinks this pirate ship for me. The heralds on the ship signaled to each other, making sure that the attack target was in front of them, and the muzzles of the ship's cannon were pointed at going merry. Boom, boom, boom. With several heavy cannon blasts, dozens of cannonballs flew towards the target. Just when he was about to succeed, a young man wearing a straw hat jumped into the air. He crazily inhaled a huge amount of air into his body, and the entire rubber body rapidly expanded and transformed. Big and round. The cannonballs that were originally going to fall on the ship all hit this human-shaped flesh ball. This monster ignored the cannonball attack and bounced all the cannonballs fired from the Baroque studio back. The cannonballs were returned to their original owners and caused damage to some ships. This small injury could not cause the ship to sink. Since the monsters on the other side's ship can block the cannonballs head-on, then attack from multiple directions at the same time. There will always be Straw Hat Boy who can't stop it place. Straw hat boy, give me a lift and throw me into the sky above the opponent. Alan is standing next to Luffy. If he uses his ability here, it will destroy the boat under his feet. In the previous shelling, the opponent had sunk Ikarim's ship, and those who wanted to escape boarded the going merry. I'll help you now, rubber rocket launcher. Luffy stretched his arms back, using the huge inertia to give him powerful force, and sent Alan flying into the sky with one blow. He had no strength left in this move. Ah, you used too much force. Everyone on the boat had no time to blame Luffy. Their eyes stayed on Alan. At this moment, the other person was flying in the sky and came to the position above the ship in Baroque Studio. I really miss this power. Alan adjusted his posture in the air and changed to a standing posture. This time he would not have to harm himself after transforming. A golden lightning flashed in the sky, and blood, flesh, skeleton, and nerves continued to grow from Alan's body. A giant figure suddenly appeared above the ship. The huge body directly smashed down, and the two ships directly below were instantly destroyed. The landing point set off huge waves, and a pointed-eared giant nearly 20 meters tall appeared in everyone's eyes. Giant. Why does the giant appear here? How is it possible for a human to become a giant? Hurry up. He's coming, my god, what kind of monster is this? The ship of Baroque Studio wanted to escape here, but how could the giant let go of its prey? The ship next to it was the first to suffer misfortune. Since it is not yet in the deep sea, Alan's transformed attack titan can stand still. The water only submerges up to his chest. He can walk on the seabed, and his giant-shaped arms have become its best weapons. The cannonball exploded on the giant's body. Although it left a black crater on it and caused some bleeding effects, it did not affect the attacking giant at all. Alan smashed one ship after another with one palm, and dragged one ship into another. These sea ships became his toys alone, with a circle of hull fragments surrounding the giant. Don't come over. Get out of here quickly. 
Witnessing a giant running wildly in the sea, amidst the voices of despair, it was too late to jump off the ship. The ship they relied on for survival was smashed to pieces by a huge fist. When the last Baroque studio ship was smashed into the sea, this nightmare finally came to an end. In just a few minutes, only the Going Merry ship was left on the sea nearby, and all the enemy ships were sent into the sea by Alan. Beren is so cool, he can actually transform into a giant. Luffy jumped up on the deck. He was born in the small place of East Blue and saw a living giant for the first time. He also wants to become a giant in the future. Fighting with a giant's body is so cool. Attack on Titan walked in the direction of going merry. Just now, Alan had his back to the Straw Hat crew. Now, with the help of the moonlight, Nami and others could clearly see the giant's appearance. He has black hair and blue eyes, elf-like pointed ears, two rows of teeth exposed, and his whole body is covered with strong muscles. His image has undergone a huge change, and there are vague similarities between the human Alan and the giant. So strong. Princess Vivi and Ikarim made the same sigh, maybe this giant can also defeat Crocodile. The giant race is a very rare existence on the sea. The destructive power of a single giant is quite powerful. However, the giants from the country of giants will choose to be mercenaries. Every time they participate in a battle, they are a group of giants, and their combat power is much higher than that of a single giant. Plus one is greater than two. That is to say, the shipbuilding technology in the country of giants is not good. Most giants will not choose to go to sea to become pirates and will be recruited by other forces. Marine used deception to get a group of giants, Vice Admiral. Luffy and others had just entered the Grand Line, and it was the first time they saw a giant of this height. He excitedly jumped on the shoulders of the attack titan, it's so cool, I want to become a giant too. He is full of love for giants and will let him develop third gear in the future, but for now he can only use second gear, a life-consuming style of play. Bouncing on those strong muscles, Luffy completely forgot about his vigilant look just now. He is a guy who can transform from a human into a giant. He wants to invite him on the boat. After Alan gets on the boat, the days ahead will be more interesting. So hot, so hot, so hot. Hot steam emitted from Attack Titan's body, and Luffy jumped back to going merry. The flesh and blood on the Titan's body was quickly evaporating and disappearing. Soon, he saw a skeleton, and Alan's figure appeared in everyone's eyes. Alan jumped out of the giant skull and landed on Luffy's boat. The giant skeleton lost control and fell into the sea, but soon disappeared into the air like flesh and blood. Alan's fluffy hair was completely spread out, and there were a few blood lines under his eyes extending to his face. This was evidence that he was controlling the giant. His physical strength was almost exhausted. He held on to the railing of going merry to prevent himself from falling. Down. Sanji saw the other person's exhausted expression and quickly took out chairs from the cabin. Alan took the chairs and sat on them, leaning back lazily on the back of the chair to relieve body fatigue. However, everyone gathered around him, staring at Alan with curious expressions, not saying anything or asking questions, which made him quite embarrassed. He gave his own explanation. Zone fruit giant form, this is the devil fruit that I eat, which can temporarily turn me into a giant to fight. However, it takes double the physical strength to deal with the enemy in the sea. Fighting on land I can last a long time. Everyone was quite satisfied after hearing this explanation. There are all kinds of strange devil fruits in the sea. It turns humans into the bodies of giants, which is not too supermodel. I ate Paramisha rubber fruit. You are the second demon fruit power on the ship, but you look so cool when you become a giant. Luffy has completely become Alan's fanboy, and wants him to transform into a giant again for him to see, but the other party refuses his unreasonable request. Each transformation consumes a lot of physical strength, even if he is a zone demon fruit power, physical strength is not unlimited either. Now that they have defeated their opponent, the Straw Hat crew is heading to the next island. With Ikarem's pointer, the second island on the Grand Line they are heading to has a nice name, Little Garden. Most of the people were resting in the cabin, and the Straw Hat crew took turns controlling the ship, sailing in the sea following the direction of the needle. This process was relatively peaceful and no more pursuers were encountered. 
Beside the coast of Whiskey Peak, the rolling waves will give you some gifts, sometimes it is fragments of ships, sometimes it is some human corpses. This time, the Baroque studio was seriously injured, and more than a dozen ships were destroyed. A large number of low-level elite personnel were lost. I'm late, the naval battle is over. A beautiful black-skinned woman was sitting on a turtle boat, holding a phone bug in her hand, reporting the results of the battle to her boss. All members of the Baroque studio were killed at this station. Fortunately, the two cadres Mr. Five and Ms. Valentine were not on the boat. They were killed. Defeat knockout and survive on the island. Are you sure it was the straw hat crew? The man on the other end of the phone smokes a cigar and has a golden hook in one hand. This is Crocodile, the boss behind Baroque Studio and a current member of Seven Warlords of the Sea. According to the description of the bounty hunter on the island, a young giant fell from the sky and destroyed all the ships by himself. Nico Robin was still working at the Baroque Studio at this time, and she was actively used by Crocodile for the historical text in Alabasta. Mr. Three is waiting for them in Little Garden. Please help him get rid of the Straw Hat crew. These little pirates are not worthy of my action. Crocodile didn't believe what Tianmu said. It was ridiculous that a fledgling pirate could defeat him just after entering the Grand Line. How could a guy who didn't know hockey defeat him with Logia Demon Fruit Power? Okay, I'll go there now. Robin hung up the phone, picked up Mr. Five and Ms. Valentine, and headed to Little Garden to pursue the Straw Hat Pirates. Since there was no interference from Robin, the Straw Hat crew entered the island range of Little Garden. However, the name made the crew quite strange. Seeing that the island was quite huge, why would they give it the name Little Garden? Icarum on the boat explained to everyone, because there are two giants on this island who have been fighting here for more than a hundred years. Their huge heights set off this island, just like a little garden. Quote dot. Cool, there are giants here. I want to go to the island to see them. Luffy jumped from going merry to the island, and Sanji's cry came from behind, I'm back after hunting some prey. There's not enough meat on the boat. Copy that, Mr. Chef, Luffy said and disappeared into the jungle and disappeared from everyone's sight. What a reckless captain. Usopp did not intend to leave the ship. He had just seen the monster on the island. There was actually a big tiger on the island. It would be scary to think about it if he met him. I'm going too. Everyone on the boat will be ruined. Zoro jumped off the boat with his three knives. Green algae head, do you want to compete to see who caught the bigger animal? Regarding Sanji's proposal for a competition, Zoro agreed without thinking. He considered himself the second in command on the ship and would not let the third in command surpass him. In you push us, Zoro and Sanji disappeared into the jungle together. Watching the ship lose three main combat forces at once, the crew members who were left watching the ship were speechless. Fortunately, Alan did not get off the ship. These three guys don't have to think about anything they do. Nami stood on the deck, looking at the beautiful scenery of Little Garden. With Mr. Alan here, no one dares to touch going merry. Usopp approached Alan's position. This powerful man gave him unlimited confidence. If something happened, this tall man would be there to take care of him. Dragon, why is there a Tyrannosaurus Rex here? Princess Vivi exclaimed, attracting everyone's attention. A huge Tyrannosaurus Rex rushed towards Going Merry. It looked like it was hungry. Why is there a dinosaur here? It's coming. Usopp tremblingly took out his slingshot, trying to protect Going Merry from being destroyed. This may be a prehistoric island. Due to the unpredictable weather of the Grand Line, communication between islands is extremely inconvenient. Some islands have rapidly developed civilization and technology, while some backward islands have maintained their original ecology. There is no communication between the two, otherwise it would be so the devil fruit, an ancient species of zone, will never appear in this world. Icarum stretched out his gun from the gap in his curls and fired at the charging Tyrannosaurus Rex, bang. 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 In effect, it can be said that there is smoke but no damage. The Tyrannosaurus Rex suffered a small injury, but it angered the beast even more, and he wanted to eat the living creatures above. Just when Alan was about to take action, a huge figure appeared from behind the Tyrannosaurus Rex. A real giant chopped down the huge tomahawk in his hand. The hunter and the prey quickly switched, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex was split into two, part. This giant with a helmet and a blonde beard dragged the body of the Tyrannosaurus Rex to the Going Merry boat. 
He bent down and looked at the people on the boat. The giant face was bigger than a human being. You have alcohol on the boat. Quote question mark. Nami and Usopp quickly agreed to the giant's request and handed all the drinks on the ship to the giant. The giant was very happy with the drinks and invited everyone to eat grilled dinosaur meat. During this period, he introduced himself to the Straw Hat crew. He was Brigi, the strongest warrior of the giant kingdom Elbath, who had been staying on this little garden island for hundreds of years. The Straw Hat crew's wine barrel was in the giant's hand. It was no bigger than the opponent's finger. It was caught between Brogi's fingers. Everyone accepted the giant's invitation and went to where he lived to eat dinosaur meat. At this time, the volcano in Little Garden suddenly erupted, and Brigi and another giant Dory met for a duel. The two giants each took up their weapons and fought together directly on the island, completely ignoring the other people around them. The fight lasted for more than 10 minutes without a winner. In the end, the battle ended with the shields slamming into each other's faces. The two giants fell to the ground at the same time and laughed. A hundred years have passed since a battle of this level. The 73,406th duel ended in a draw again. Brigi threw a few wine barrels to the opponent, and the giant Dory caught these little things. He had not drank for a long time and wanted to have a drink. Luffy found the Dory giant alone, and the two of them were going to enjoy the wine. The prey competition between Sanji and Zoro also had no winner. The two of them walked deeper into the little garden, looking for larger and heavier prey. When the two parties enjoy good food and wine, there are always some spoilers to spoil their fun, namely the haunting members of the Baroque studio. Because Mr. Five had just been sent to the island by Robin, Mr. Three's original plan of adding a bomb to the drink failed to come true. However, the third brother was confident in himself and could defeat the newly debuted pirate without any plot. The third brother is the future deputy of the emperor. This time he wants to eat a lot of fat in one go. Not only does he have to kill the Straw Hat crew and Princess Vivi in the Little Garden, but he also has to win the bounty of the two giants. A hundred years ago they were wanted and were worth a bounty of 100 million, so they could make extra money for themselves while serving their boss. There are three of us, let's just suffer death today. Mr. Three faces the Straw Hat crew who have lost the three most powerful players. As Paramisha wax wax fruit, he can defeat them in an instant as long as he is serious. There is also his partner Ms. Golden Week beside him. Although this little girl is not demon fruit power, she can use different colors of paint to give negative buffs to enemies. Baroque is the partner of the leader Mr. Zero. Nico Robin looked at everyone with curiosity. She noticed that there was a black-haired young man among the group. This was someone who had not appeared in the agency's intelligence. These people are your enemies. Brigi really hates people interrupting his banquet. He was already drinking well and even the dinosaur meat was almost roasted. What a spoiler. This group of people from Baroque Studio chased us all the way. A group of bounty hunters are working for pirates. It's really laughable to tell you that. Nami doesn't pretend anymore. Now that he knows that the other party's boss is the seven warlords of the sea, if he doesn't eradicate them completely, he will be remembered by them for the rest of his life. Bounty hunter, I, a pirate, will help you deal with them, and then we can drink together. Brigi, a giant of nearly 20 meters, stood up and picked up his giant axe weapon. He wanted to kill the ungrateful group of guys in front of him. Seeing the giant striding over, Mr. Three's hair burst into flames, and his two arms turned into a ball of white wax. As a demon fruit power, he was not afraid of any giants. Candle shackles. The wax liquid was controlled by Mr. Three and flowed to Brogy's legs. The white wax liquid instantly solidified into a block and fixed the giant's feet, allowing the running giant to smash directly in front of him. It's not over yet, slime carving, giant sword. Mr. Three splashed the wax liquid into the air, and it instantly condensed into a white candle giant sword. The giant sword stabbed the limbs of the giant Brigi, locking the giant in place. Blood flowed out from his injured position, dyeing the opponent's wax liquid red. The giant has been dealt with, it's your turn. Usopp took the opportunity to make a sneak attack and fired a few rounds of ammunition with his slingshot, but they were blocked by the opponent's candle wall and had no effect at all. You know this little trick, so there's no need for Master Robin to take action. Mr. Three's whole body was filled with liquid wax and he was walking towards the crowd. 
He wanted to make these people into candle statues, among which Princess Vivi was a work of art. At this time, Alan has become the hope of the whole village. The only remaining weakling stood up when he saw him. Everyone stepped back to make room for him. The giant just now was defeated. Will the appearance of another giant turn the tide of the battle? A boy whose hair has not yet fully grown, put your hopes on him, and let me use my candle waterfall. A huge amount of wax liquid was produced from Mr. Three's body, forming a terrifying sea of wax liquid two meters high. It would completely submerge the overconfident black-haired young man in front of him. No matter how powerful the opponent's physical skills were, as long as he was touched by the wax liquid, he would be destroyed. Unable to move. Everyone witnessed with their own eyes that Alan was covered in wax liquid. Where he originally stood, his appearance could not be seen, but was replaced by a piece of white wax liquid. A bolt of golden lightning struck from the sky, and the originally solidified wax liquid was melted by the steam inside. Flesh, bones, and nerves were quickly combined in everyone's eyes. A young giant 20 meters tall appeared in everyone's eyes. A human turned into a 20 meter tall giant. Mr. Three was shocked and opened his mouth wide. The other person was able to break free of the solidified wax. Are you demon fruit power too? The appearance of the pointed-eared young giant confirmed the intelligence received by Robin. The Baroque Studios ship was destroyed by a giant. This ability to transform into a giant at any time is very effective in sudden attacks. The members of the club are not prepared and can easily succeed. The giant Brogy's eyes were not covered by the wax liquid. He witnessed the whole process of Alan's transformation with his own eyes. To be honest, if he hadn't seen it with his own eyes, he would never believe that a human could become a giant. What's more, this young giant is not wearing any clothes. Fortunately, there are no masculine features under his eight-pack abs, otherwise it would really embarrass the women present. Being seen as a giant without clothes really discredits the entire giant race. Brigitte doesn't want to be considered by other races as an uncivilized primitive creature. Although Alan is embarrassed by humans, it is the giant race that loses face. After that, I want to talk to this young human being, Mr. Three defeated a giant, how can he be afraid of another giant, so what if I become a giant, slime carving, giant sword? The wax liquid splashed and the air solidified into white giant swords. These white creations were as hard as iron. They were shot in the direction of the attacking giants. Even giants were mortal bodies. They would bleed and be injured. The white giant sword flew towards him. Alan retracted his arms in front of his chest in a boxing attack posture. The giant's big fist hardened and shattered the enemy's giant face creation with one punch. The hardening was harder than steel. How is this possible? What is that wrapped in your hand? Mr. Three saw the giant's hands turn white, and the flesh and blood body became extremely hard. This was not the color of armament hockey. What ability could make the body so hard? The young giant didn't give him a chance to breathe. He opened his legs and ran in the direction of Mr. Three. During this period, the opponent used liquid wax to block him, but as a result, the giant's whole body was emitting high temperature vapor, which caused the wax to fail to solidify instantly and turned into a white color. The sludge became the embellishment on the other party's body. Extra large serving candle wall. A solid wall composed of white wax liquid instantly raised the six paths wall in front of Mr. Three, trying to offset the giant's impact on him one by one, giving him time to prepare his ultimate move. Attack on Titan recreates the famous scene of Guy's Titan. His whole body is covered in white hardening, and he crashes into the solidified wax wall in front of him without slowing down at all and with huge inertia. Boom, 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 boom. The walls of six paths were completely unable to stop attack on Titan. Every time he passed through a wall, it left traces of broken parts. Blocks of solidified wax were sent flying by him. Mr. Three's strongest defensive move became a Ren's background, plate. When Alan came to Mr. Three, the opponent had already used his final trick, the Candle Champion Cup and his whole body except his head was wrapped in solid wax, turning him into a 4-meter tall little giant. But in front of a 20-meter tall giant, the opponent was still a dwarf. Seeing the giant's sarcastic grin, Mr. Three was very angry. He punched the giant's legs with his candle-wrapped fists, champion's fist, plowing fist. 
The legs of Attack Titan were hardened, and he just stood there and let the little man punch him. The furious Mr. Three's fists fell on him like raindrops. After working hard for a long time, no damage was caused, and some wax liquid flowed out, on the legs. Regarding his little thought, Alan emitted hot steam from his whole body and evaporated the wax on the giant's body. As long as the wax did not solidify, it would not threaten him. Mr. Three lost his most important means of attack. Master Robin, please save me. I saw the giant's slap coming over, and it was also covered with a layer of white substance, which was harder than the primary armament hockey. If I was touched, I would have to lie down for at least a month. A white arm instantly appeared behind Mr. Three's head. He melted his candle armor and was easily pulled out by the suddenly generated arm. A bunch of arms were generated on the ground, relaying the man to the back. Mr. Three's champion's cup armor was instantly shattered into pieces by Attack Titan's slap. If he had stayed here just now, these would have been more than just wax blocks. What a terrifying power. Why does he have so many abilities? Mr. Three was lying at Robin's feet, panting heavily. He was almost dead just now. He had never encountered such a terrifying opponent since he went on the mission. The steam and hardening completely restrained his fruit ability. Robin looked at the giant in front of him with curious eyes. It was understandable that the giant ate the Renren fruit and turned into a giant form. The high heat steam emitted from the whole body and the hardening that covered the whole body at will were also caused by the devil fruit. Ability. Could it be that the other party is not an ordinary zone fruit, but a more special species of phantom beast? Ms. Golden Week was painting on the giant body. The little girl's ability worked on the simple guy Luffy, but if it were replaced by Alan, who was more serious-minded, no matter what color he applied, it would have no effect. There's nothing I can do about Master Robin. His spirit and will are so terrifying that I can't hypnosis. Ms. Golden Week had a grievance on her face and pouted her mouth. The girl had encountered people with powerful mental abilities before. Her hypnosis ability had a slight effect, but this was the first time she encountered this monster in front of her. Attack on Titan, who yearns for freedom, will not be controlled by anyone. Nami, are you okay? Luffy rushed over from the depths of the jungle, carrying a man and woman on his shoulders, Mr. Five and Ms. Valentine. An explosive man and a kilogram woman came to Luffy again. The two-on-one fight didn't last long when they were touched by the rubber man at close range. The two guys, who were not resistant to beatings, just lay down. There was a huge difference in physique. There was also a dory giant behind him. Zoro carried his prey and followed the giant to prevent getting lost. Sanji touched Mr. Three's house of wax alone, defeated the unlucky duo who came for reinforcements, and grabbed the permanent ticket to Alabasta, Pointer. With so many people to face at the same time, and two of Baroque Studios' cadres being captured, it was by no means the smartest way to fight the Straw Hat crew again. Failure in this battle was not a crime of war. No chance, let's go. Robin gave the order to retreat. Regardless of the reactions of others, she turned around and left alone. What to do with the cadres the other party has? Faced with the questioning from Mr. Three, this beautiful woman did not respond. Seeing that she had completely given up on her approach, the two cadres, Mr. Five and Ms. Valentine. We have been working together for so long, and Mr. Three did not choose to abandon his companions. The third brother of the Emperor's deputy in the original timeline wanted to use his fruit power to make a last-ditch effort. He was covered in swimming wax liquid and rushed to Luffy's position. He wanted to capture a prisoner and turn the tide of the battle. And his partner, Ms. Golden Week, quietly followed Robin and ran away early. What do pirates love to do the most? Of course there's a party. Nothing is more important than having a party. Defeated the enemy and held a party to celebrate. The three cadres of the Baroque studio were taken captive and soaked in a barrel filled with seawater. The future third brother of the emperor's deputy was beaten with blood all over his head and he would not wake up for a while. Princess Vivi wants the Straw Hat crew to go to Alabasta as soon as possible to thwart the seven warlords of the sea's conspiracy to steal the country. She is thinking about her father. Tens of thousands of rebels are approaching the capital, and she is not in the mood to eat and drink with everyone in the little garden. Luffy suffered a lot of bombs from Mr. Five, a booger man, and was pressed by Ms. Valentine with a huge force. His body was injured a lot from the inside out, 
and he needed to eat a lot of food, firstly to regain his strength, and secondly, to recover from his injuries. There are a large number of powerful people in the pirate world who all have this special physique. Firstly, they can eat and drink very well. Secondly, they will recover from injuries quickly after eating. None of them can be described by common sense. In short, being able to eat means fighting power. Your country is no different. Everyone is too tired today and it is impossible to sail overnight. Nami stood up at this time and objected to Princess Vivi's proposal to set off immediately. She is not the one who controls the ship. The situation on the Grand Line is unpredictable. Miss Navigator has to work hard every day. She is not ironclad. As a little girl, you need to rest. Princess Vivi wanted to continue speaking, but was stopped by her minister Ikarim. Your Highness, I believe that the Kingdom Guard will not be that fragile, not less than this night. But, before the princess could finish speaking, Ikarim pulled his princess into a deserted corner. He did not want to offend the Straw Hat crew at this time. These groups seemed to be good people on the surface, but the pirates' evil identities were it cannot be washed away. Once you are a pirate, you will always be a pirate. Everyone in Little Garden did not fall into Mr. Three's conspiracy. Zoro Nami and Princess Vivi were not made into wax figures. Princess Vivi and the Straw Hat crew did not experience the test of life and death, and their friendship and bond were broken. With the existence of Eren Jaeger, the deus ex machina, helping the Straw Hat crew defeat the third brother, Princess Vivi hired this group of pirates to save the country in her heart. As for wanting to become their partner, that was absolutely unacceptable. It's possible. It's inappropriate to leave the princess of a world government member country alone and run out to become a pirate. What does she want? Sanji, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm so hungry. Luffy came to his royal chef, rolling on the ground, using this childish method to urge the chef to cook faster. Sanji held a cigarette in his mouth, his eyes filled with pent-up anger, and punched his captain, telling him to stop for a while and stop wandering around in front of him. Preparing food for everyone on the ship is already a hard job, but now with the addition of two giants nearly 20 meters tall, the appetite cannot be reduced at first sight. As a chef, he cannot mess with the ingredients. At least it is better than roasting dinosaur meat. It's delicious, it doesn't have any other taste without salt. This time he was going to make an authentic roasted whole dragon. A whole Tyrannosaurus Rex was framed by a thick tree. Dory and Brigitte helped the cook control the heat. Sanji kept sprinkling spices on the dragon meat and occasionally adding some spices to the meat. Cut the thick part with a knife. It smells delicious. I haven't smelled such a good smell in a long time. Let's take out our inventory today and let these little guys have fun. The inventory the two giants talked about was wine brewed from various fruits when they landed on the island, and they agreed to open and taste the wine after one side wins. But more than a hundred years have passed. If Luffy and his friends hadn't come to Little Garden, the fruit wine would still be buried underground for who knows how long. Brigitte took out a hundred-year-old bottle of wine to thank the Straw Hat crew for saving his life. His life was almost handed over to Marine. These external possessions were not so important. After all, he only had one life. Alan turned into a giant and acted as a porter again. Last time he was moving stones to block the damaged city gate. This time he was moving a not too small wine barrel. It was a huge barrel 10 meters wide and 10 meters high. It was very big, in line with the behavior of the giants. Attack on Titan is still the same as before without a bird on its crotch. Dory Giant shook his head when he saw it. It really made Brigitte see who was right. This kid's devil fruit ability has seriously damaged the image of the giant family. The roasted whole dragon is ready, and the century-old wine is also ready, so what are you waiting for? The banquet is going to be held right now. Luffy, cheers. Alan, cheers. Zoro, cheers. Nami, cheers. Sanji, cheers. Usopp, cheers. The wine glasses in the hands of the two giants were comparable to the size of going merry. Together with everyone, cheers. Princess Vivi and Ikarim joined in to share the joy of victory. Cheers. After everyone had finished their first glass of wine, Sanji took the initiative to cut dinosaur meat for everyone. His cooking skills were not to mention. Captain Luffy was holding a whole T-Rex hind leg and gnawing it into his stomach. It was very satisfying. Soon the rubber man's belly was stretched out and became round and big. 
As a gentleman, Sanji took the initiative to cut some small pieces of breast meat for the two ladies, which is the most delicious part of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. As for the other stinky men, they hastily cut some meat with bones so that they can gnaw the bones. Sanji's dinosaur meat is good. I never thought dinosaur meat could be so delicious. Hearing the compliments from Nami-chan and Vivi-chan, Sanji swayed in place, his eyes flashing with love, and he wanted to pounce on them immediately. While Sanji was courting the beautiful woman, Zoro was gnawing on the bones and glanced at Alan. He saw him sitting alone in the corner drinking silently. His special melancholy temperament made him couldn't help but move forward to chat. Said, Ellen, you never said, which island are you going to? Upon hearing this question, everyone except Luffy and the giant immediately closed their mouths and listened with their ears pricked up. After drinking all the liquid in the wine glass, Alan answered Zoro's question, I'm going to Drum Island. I heard there are many famous doctors there. I want to go to this place to see a doctor. See a doctor. Alan looks rosy and can turn into a giant at any time to fight. Will he get sick? Will such a powerful guy be troubled by illness? The Straw Hat crew definitely doesn't know about Drum Island. Princess Vivi has a bad memory. As the minister of the kingdom, Ikarim knows some things about Drum Island. After all, the other party also belongs to the world government member country. Alan, I want to tell you some bad news. Drum Island has changed. The tyrant king has expelled most of the doctors. There will be no results if you go to Drum Island again. After that, Ikarim described the location of Drum Island, which is only a few days away from Little Garden and on the same route as Alabasta. It's okay. Just drop me off after passing by the Drum Island. I have my own way to find a doctor. Alan insisted on going, but no one tried to persuade him, and the drinking atmosphere suddenly cooled down. On the island of Little Garden, the Straw Hat crew held a banquet with the two giants all night long. Everyone ate and drank a lot of food and drinks. It was not until noon the next day that everyone woke up one after another. But our navigator and chef actually fell ill at the same time. They suddenly had high fevers that wouldn't go away. There was no doctor on board and they didn't understand the disease. I got sick just after entering the Grand Line. I was lucky. The symptoms that broke out immediately were not hidden in the body, allowing Straw Hat crew to seek medical treatment quickly. Princess Vivi took care of the two people in the cabin, wiping their bodies with hot towels, but this could not cool down the other person, and both the man and the woman were mentally burned and confused. As for the stupid method Luffy thought of, trying to bring the crew's illness to himself, it was completely impossible to achieve. Zoro and Alan stopped him from letting this brainless captain mess around. It's worth it for me, Sanji, to die here if I can be taken care of by Her Highness the Princess. Although he was seriously ill and was weak, he could get close contact with Princess Vivi, and a woman wiped a man's body. He had never enjoyed this kind of love. I don't want to die yet so go ahead and die. Nami was soft all over but her mouth was still tough. She died on the road just after entering the Grand Line. Her dream had not been realized yet and she absolutely could not die here. Although most of the doctors on Drum Island have been disbanded, King Wapple still has 20 famous doctors around him. As long as he helps, these diseases will be minor problems. As a minister of the kingdom, Ikarim still knows a lot about other countries but he is not sure in his heart. The king is a formality-minded guy who cannot be described by common sense at all. It is even more difficult to ask him to do things. More difficult. Then let's go to Drum Island now. Luffy looked solemn. He was not joking when it came to his partner's life. He was the one who valued his partner the most. Usopp originally intended to throw the three prisoners in the Baroque studio on the ship into the sea and let them fend for themselves. If he let them go easily, he would incur even more violent revenge. Even if Straw Hat crew takes the initiative to do such dirty things as killing people, they still can't do it. After all, they are portrayed as the hero of a young hot-blooded comic. We can only entrust the two giants to take care of it. As for whether the three cadres can survive each other's hands, and what happens next, it has nothing to do with the Straw Hat crew, and they will not admit it if they are not responsible. When Raji and Dory giants combined to use Hakoku, the going Mary rushed directly from the mouth of the Sea Kings, and the Straw Hat crew's trip to Little Garden came to a perfect end. The weapons of the two giants were damaged as a result, and they had no reason to continue fighting. 
They had to find the lost members of the giant pirates and set sail again to the sea to set sail again. Zoro was standing on the deck practicing his sword skills. A white news bird flew over. Seeing that the old man had no money to buy news, it flew to Ikarim again. Give me a copy. He threw a hundred baileys into the newsbird's pocket. The other party happily put the latest newspaper on the boat, spread its wings and flew away to find the next buyer on the sea. No matter how heinous the pirates are, they will not harm Newsbird. If they accidentally offend them, this group will never sell their newspapers again. The Grand Line is unpredictable and the transportation is inconvenient. You can only see the outside world through newspapers and become familiar with what is happening outside. If you lose this only way, you can spend your whole life as a primitive on a small island or at sea. Morgan's news headlines are as sensational as ever. In short, these headlines are very eye-catching, making readers unable to help but read the entire news. The evil pirate, the man who increased his bounty fastest. The fifth emperor of the future at sea. Buggy the clown disappears in East Blue, brewing a huge conspiracy. Artoria joins Marine, the future Marine Admiral. Red-haired Shanks comes into contact with the Whitebeard Pirates. Marine is also quite impressive this time. The original bounty for Buggy the Clown was only 15 million baileys, but this time it has jumped to 3 billion baileys, a direct increase of 200 times. This has never been seen on the sea, characters. Marine and world government also negotiated over this matter, not because the amount of the wanted order was too high, but because the bounty was too low. They believed that 3 billion belly completely underestimated the strength of Buggy the Clown. The main person who has an opinion on the low bounty is a Kainu admiral himself, who fought against Buggy the Clown. In his fight against other big pirates, there is no doubt about the destructive power of Lava Lava Fruit. However, Buggy the Clown's ability to disintegrate outside of his body caused Sakazuki's magma to be torn apart without even touching his body, causing no harm. In the battle with the enemy, Sakazuki used many methods. Only a small part of the time he was able to burn the opponent with magma, and most of them were resolved by the opponent's devil fruit ability. That conqueror's entanglement technique still gives Sakazuki a headache. If he hadn't been constantly training his body, he wouldn't have been able to withstand a few hits from the opponent. The injury for injury tactic that he originally focused on was ineffective in front of Buggy the Clown. The only thing a Kainu Admiral can do against Buggy the Clown is that he has plenty of physical strength and can drag the fight between the two sides into a protracted battle, so that Sakazuki has a chance of winning. It can be said that Buggy the Clown has become the nemesis of a Kainu Admiral. A single Admiral cannot defeat the opponent in a short time. With such a terrifying guy appearing on the sea, the bounty of 3 billion belly is really too small. It seriously underestimates the strength of the opponent. This is not about Marine Admiral letting others have ambitions and extinguishing his own prestige. Sakazuki pursues truth from facts. He will not be a person who whitewashes peace. He wants to put some pressure on Marine internally and can no longer let pirates wreak havoc on the sea. Sakazuki's request for a large conscription was finally rejected by Marshal Sengoku. Now that Marine is not weak enough, the Admiral and the Marshal have serious differences here. However, Arturia gave Sakazuki some surprises. After this female swordsman wore justice, she was close to Sakazuki in terms of the concept of justice. Although not as extreme as him, the two had similar attitudes towards pirates to eliminate evil and keep them out. Individuals can be said to be like-minded. Marine has been searching for traces of Buggy the Clown in East Blue, but he seems to have disappeared out of thin air, and there are no clues at all. However, Marine did not relax his vigilance. He reduced his troops to defend several important locations in East Blue. He did not think that Buggy the Clown died in the Logue Town incident, and predicted that he was still brewing a conspiracy behind the scenes. It is the most embarrassing thing for such an old scumbag to hide. A headache for everyone. In the world government member country located in East Blue, most kings have evacuated East Blue with their queens and children. This is also due to the influence of the clown buggy. As long as he does not die for one day, the nobles of East Blue will not sleep well every day. Affected by Buggy the Clown, the most unlucky person is not the man in the small countries like East Blue who is most affected. He is a crew member of the former pirate king. Marine paid a heavy price to capture him. 
The Paramisha Fusion Fruit Demonic Power User is now being captured. Bullet is imprisoned on the sixth floor of the undersea prison. In this impel down where it is absolutely impossible to escape, only Golden Lion Shaki broke off his legs and left. Apart from this Lion Fruit User, he can still be said to be impregnable against all pirates who entered here. You can't escape even if you have wings. Originally, the guards of Impel Down thought they had done a good job, but the information revealed on the sky screen showed that they would seriously neglect their duties in the future. Not only did Buggy the Clown come into contact with Bullet, but they also allowed him to escape, which indirectly caused the subsequent Iron-Blooded War. The battle resulted in the entire Marine Army being annihilated. The world government sent two CP-0s to the sixth floor of Impel Down Prison. These two torture masters, plus Shiryu of the Rain, wanted to get the purpose of Buggy the Clown from Bullet's mouth. What a man with a strong will, yet you don't even say anything even if you are like this. I'm becoming more and more interested in the secrets you hide. The unlucky Bullet had his hand and hamstrings broken by Shiryu of the Rain. He kept leaving wounds on his strong body and tortured him to make him reveal the secret. But in front of this soldier with this little pain on his body, he didn't even say a word about pain. Every time he answered, he said he didn't know three words, which made the three torturers feel slighted and intensified the physical torture on him. Buggy the Clown has an inextricable relationship with Bullet. The latter is also dishonest in the special process prison. While others are living lifelessly in prison, this guy is exercising every day in the prison. Before the light curtain appears, it seems that knowing that one day he would successfully escape from prison, this abnormal behavior aroused more suspicion. The inmates on the sixth floor were also unlucky. More chains were reinforced on their bodies, including high concentration seastone chains, to prevent this group of extremely evil ability users from escaping. Demon fruit power, which was already weak, became even more unbearable. These vicious pirates on the sea took their revenge on the clown buggy. Rain Shiryu received the latest order from the world government, which requires him to guard Impel down the sixth floor of the prison every day to prevent Buggy the Clown from sneaking in and to prevent him from meeting Bullet immediately. Magellan, the master of Impel Down and the highest official here, cannot leave. He has the poisonous Paramisha fruit and has to go to the toilet ten hours a day. He can only leave this important task to Shiryu of the Rain. Even if the other party has a history of abusing prisoners, a dead pirate is a good pirate, which is better than them reappearing at sea. At the same time, the second master was promoted to the same level as Haniabal. Shiryu of the Rain readily accepted this order brought by CPO. Being able to kill powerful pirates on the sixth floor was when he enjoyed it the most. Dealing with the small pirates on the five floors above no longer gave him much pleasure. This kind of die-hard guy, why not kill him? To deal with a guy like Bullet, you can't do it hard or softly. It's better to give him a knife and use it as a sacrifice, and send him to meet the former pirate king. However, the world government has different opinions. CPO has the first task of ensuring that Bullet cannot die. The greedy five elders are also interested in the secrets that the clown buggy wants to get from him. What kind of secret is it that allows a strong man like Buggy the Clown to pretend to be a grandson in front of Marine, and also sneak into Impel Down to find Bullet? If it can be known in advance, it will definitely be beneficial to the rule of world government. That magical light curtain not only reaches into the sky but also goes deep into the sea. The mermaid people of the mermaid kingdom can watch it without floating to the sea. The same is true for the underwater prison. The light curtain penetrates the thick wall of Impel Down, allowing the jailers and prisoners to watch together. The latter have no right to read newspapers and do not know external information, but with the existence of the light curtain, the originally dead heart is completely activated. Another powerful pirate appears on the sea, causing headaches for marine and world government. The pirates in prison will just keep cheering. As long as the first two are defeated, they will be very happy. With their personal freedom restricted, the pirates on the light screen information is the only diversion in a dark life. The prisoners can also chat freely on the light screen, make jokes and say dirty words, and can contact the outside world. However, most of these criminals are alone. Even if someone outside wants to save them, it will be difficult to save them. There have been changes, we can't chat anymore. There is a new picture, it is an island in winter. 
You pirates, stop arguing and be more honest with me. Facing the noisy prisoners, the jailers were not stingy with their whips and used them on these criminals one after another to make these heinous guys calm down. Based on the last experience, these prisoners are the most honest when watching the light curtain. No matter how beaten or scolded, they will not move. This is all in order to watch the future information on the light curtain in time. Even if they cannot get out, they will not move. The future is full of hope. CP0 and Shiryu of Rain stopped torturing Bullet and also looked at the light curtain deep into the sixth level. The latter had been in prison for so many years and basically knew nothing about the islands on the Grand Line. But as the most elite agent of the world government, CP0 can recognize the islands on the light screen at a glance. This climate that stays in winter all year round is the best evidence. It's the drum island in the first half of the Grand Line. What secrets can there be in such a small kingdom? Drum Island was relatively famous in the past few years. Originally, outsiders went there for medical treatment. However, since King Wapal expelled a large number of doctors, this country has become unpopular. If Wapal hadn't paid the same amount of heavenly gold every year, the world government would have kicked him out of the franchise country long ago. This kind of short-sighted king has simply lowered the standard of the franchise country. CP0 also got some information. King Wapal formed a group of white iron pirates. A good king should not be a pirate. He can't even do the most basic tax collection work. The governance level of this country is adequate. The picture reappeared on the light screen and spread all over the world. The last time it led to a vicious pirate on the sea, a being with a bounty of 3 billion baileys. The second review received even more attention from many parties. The unpredictable future has become a known existence. Marine, pirates, and world government cannot refuse this temptation. They cannot miss any of the above information, and each one must be strictly analyzed and recorded. On file. I wonder what kind of existence this guy known as the God of Zone is on the sea. The place on the light screen is really Drum Island. The suspicious voices of the Straw Hat crew made Ikarim very unhappy. These people questioned his professionalism. As the chief minister of Alabasta, he still had this knowledge. But most of the residents on this island are ordinary residents, and the only remaining witch doctor, the god of zone, can't relate to them at all. In the subsequent description, Ikarim told everyone about the brutal king of Wapal, who is a user with Paramisha Munch Munch Fruit ability, and has a zone ordinary Munch Munch Fruit user under his command. These two people are completely unrelated to the god of zone. Ikarim also met these two people at the last world summit. He also helped Princess Vivi recall the memory of Wapal beating her. After hearing this, the Straw Hat crew had an insight. This is a group of scum who rode in the national a scum who not only dominates the country but also harms the people. Munch munch fruit users, there are so many demon fruit powers on this grand line. Zoro sighed while waving his sword. When he was a pirate hunter in East Blue, he had never seen so many demon fruit powers. Especially the cadres of Baroque Studio, almost everyone ate a devil fruit. His current level of swordsmanship has not yet reached the level of cutting steel, and it is more than enough to deal with some small pirates. When it comes to opponents at Mr. Three level, it is more difficult to fight alone. With this strange devil fruit ability, as a swordsman, he realizes his own shortcomings. So after setting off from Whiskey Peak, whenever he had time to spare, he had been honing his physical fitness and practicing his three-sword style swordsmanship. He didn't want to lose to anyone again, let alone hold back the Captain Luffy. In the first half of the line, few people will use hockey. In the second half of the Grand Line, it is the version of hockey, where swordsmen and those who are good at physical skills can be greatly strengthened. I have decided to recruit a doctor partner on Drum Island so that everyone will not get sick. Luffy sat on the sheep's head and opened his arms. He shouted to the sea in front of him. The pain could not stop him from taking risks. The weather on the Grand Line is really unpredictable. It was a sunny day just now, and when we drove to this sea area, snowflakes fell from the sky, and a biting cold wind blew on the sea. Fortunately, the sea was not frozen, so going merry could go normally. Sailing. The closer we get to Magu Island, the lower the temperature at sea becomes. Fortunately, the navigator Nami has the foresight to purchase a batch of winter clothes in Logue Town. Everyone puts on winter clothes to keep themselves as warm as possible. 
I don't know what Shanks is doing. He beat up his friend Buggy the Clown. He won't blame me. Everyone couldn't help but roll their eyes when they heard these words. It was Buggy the Clown who was hiding his own clumsiness. He mainly used the straw hat crew to enter and pell down. This big pirate with 3 billion baileys, you're the only one who has a bounty of 30 million baileys. Little pirates can make a fortune, but Luffy's bounty is only a fraction of others. The second half of the Grand Line. The red hair pirates left the station of the Whitebeard pirates. The meeting ended on bad terms. Shanks underestimated Edward Newgate's arrogance. His unfounded confidence as an elder in his younger generation really left the red hair speechless. Even if you don't call Ace back and send a strong man to pick him up, you can't even do this request. He said that you need to temper your son and let him experience his own storms, so that he has the chance to grow into a towering tree. Big tree. But if the wind and waves are too strong, Ace, a small tree that has not yet grown tall, is likely to be cut in half by Blackbeard Teach. Shanks has done his best to sit here for the son of the former captain. From now on, it will depend on Ace's own fate. Fortunately, the treasure is placed on Luffy. In the light curtains telling of the future, this once inconspicuous little guy will gradually become stronger and defeat one opponent after another. He will inherit the will of the previous pirate King Roger, and may really become the next one. One Piece. Just as Shanks was thinking about the future, he heard a report from the crew that a small boat was approaching. It was Mahawk, the world's greatest swordsman. His small boat, which had remained unchanged for 10,000 years, was really not worthy of his seven warlords, of the sea's identity. The other party did not come to fight with him. Shanks was a swordsman and had a broken hand, so Mahawk lost interest in him. What a rare visitor. Mahawk boarded the four emperors' ship. The purpose of coming this time was not to give them Luffy's bounty, nor was it to give them Buggy's bounty. Shanks is not worried about the situation of these two people. Luffy has just entered the Grand Line adventure, and his friend Buggy is said in the newspaper that he does not know whether he will live or die. However, the life card does not lie, and this lucky clown is still alive and well. Buggy's life card is damaged. Shanks guesses that he was seriously injured in the Logue Town incident and is still recovering somewhere in East Blue. You want to ask Artoria. Shanks has some connections in the world government. He can go to see the five elders at any time. Mahawk can only ask him where Arturia is now. This sudden rise of the female swordsman joined the marine force, which made some pirate forces feel uneasy. Her attack method of destroying islands with one sword, Morgans, the birdman, was absolutely right. She was a humanoid ancient weapon. I want to learn about the strength of this female great swordsman. Mahawk has already lifted Arturia to the same great swordsman position as him. He is a male great swordsman and the other is a female great swordsman. The great swordsmen have to decide who is the best swordsman in the world. Shanks took out a phone bug and walked to the cabin to talk to a mysterious person. After chatting for more than 10 minutes, he returned to the crew. Give this good friend a reply. Artoria Admiral Candidate has not been deployed. She is currently at Marine Headquarters Marineford. If it takes a few more months, I will not guarantee it. Seeing that Mahawk was about to leave after hearing the news, Shanks quickly stopped him and asked him to stay and watch the light curtain before leaving. By the way, he could attend the banquet on their ship in the strongest swordsman showdown with Artoria. That was all. Time. This great swordsman is full of interest in the future. The light screen may reveal a stronger swordsman. A militant like him must grasp the opponent's information as soon as possible and block the opponent's door to fight with him. Sugu Island Sigufung Castle. There lived a witch doctor who was 139 years old and kept a strange creature that looked like a reindeer with a pink hat on its head. Kuleha Medical Mother, God of Zone, do we have such a person on Drum Island? The speaker is less than one meter tall, standing on two feet, with two antlers on his head that pierce the pink hat. He has a blue nose, a brown body, and is covered with fine hair. If there were outsiders here at this time, they would definitely jump up in surprise to see a reindeer talking. What kind of monster is this? Kuleha looked at the light curtain outside the window and did not answer the question about her pet. She felt a little uneasy in her heart. Just like the day Sarulik died, she always felt that something bad would happen. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.